Good evening. This is the Transitional Presbyter Report from the November 16, 2016 meeting of Albany Presbytery. This is a recording of the report which was given at the Presbytery meeting on that day. I'd like to begin tonight with scripture from Isaiah. This is the translation from the message by Eugene Peterson, and he titles Isaiah 43, that chapter, he titles it, When You Are Between a Rock and a Hard Place. And these are some of the selected verses from that chapter. But now, God's message. The God who made you in the first place, Jacob. The God who got you started, Israel. Do not be afraid, I have redeemed you. I have called your name, you are mine. When you're in over your head, I will be there with you. When you are in rough waters, you will not go down. When you are between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end, because I am God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior. I paid a huge price for you, all of Egypt, with rich Cush and Seba thrown in. That's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. I'd sell off the whole world to get you back, trade the creation just for you. This is what God says. The God who builds a road right through the ocean, who carves a path through pounding waves. The God who summons horses and chariots and armies. They lie down and then can't get up. They're snuffed out like so many candles. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert, be present. I am about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is, I'm making a road through the desert, rivers in the badlands. Wild animals will say thank you, the coyotes and the buzzards, because I provided water in the desert, rivers through the sun-baked earth. Drinking water for the people I chose, the people I made especially for myself, a people custom-made to praise me. Amen. As we have engaged in our transitional work, we have had goals as a presbytery. I have shown these goals multiple times in my reports because I believe it is important to go back and remember over and over again what our goals are. I'm not going to go through them again tonight. We have seen them many times, but it is important to remember them. It is also important to remember that these are the watchwords that we said that we would be about in transitional work. We would be creative. We would look for God's abundance. We would take risks. And we would seek to be prophetic. A colleague of mine, his name is David Spate. David lives over the border in Massachusetts, shared these words with me on a conference call a few weeks ago. He shared that we are at the front end of a long period of adaptive change, not just as the church, but as our whole society that we are living in and a part of. So what does it mean is the question he was prompting on the call. What does it mean to navigate this time of great challenge and possibility? And there were four things that David raised. There is a high need to stay open and not closed to look at the margins and not the center, to stay in the balcony, not the dance floor, to ground in the spirit, not in distraction. This is a chart that I showed the Presbytery back in January. It's from Otto Scharmer. This is Theory U. He's written a whole book about this. And the bottom part, the yellow, is the U, And the blue is the opposite side, maybe the shadow side of the yellow U. The tension is always between the bottom and the top part of the U and the choices that we make. Which part of the U are we living in? And where are we going as we move through the change cycle and as we try to figure out where we are going? The U is not a theological piece, but if we look at this image alongside the Isaiah passage, which I just read, 
we can see some wonderful theological pieces as we look at the you cycle of where we might be going. Are we downloading or are we performing? Are we downloading or are we destroying? Do we have an open mind, an open heart, and an open will? Or are we stuck in a worldview, stuck in an us versus them cycle? Or are we stuck in something that might be of our own individual selves? So in the future, as we go into these four categories that my colleague David Spate lays out, in the future, we will need to be open, not closed. In Isaiah, we hear of God, and the passage in Isaiah is all about God being the open hands, God imagining the future, and the people not being quite sure how to get there. God says in Isaiah 43, do not be afraid. This situation that you are in right now, this is not a dead end. God reiterates over and over again, you mean everything to me. God says, stop dwelling in the past. And God reminds the people of the big picture. I am the God of creation. If we stand in the middle and look at ourselves in the midst of creation, how small we are and how vast the openness and giftedness around us is. In the future, we are called to go to the margins and not the center. We have been experimenting with our margins a lot as we have launched two new worshiping communities, and Tim is already in the process of launching our next one. Members of the Presbytery have been getting deep in anti-racism work, and some people have been getting very strong in that work, looking at our structure as the larger church and what we are and who we are called to be. As we heard tonight from Kate, getting deep into the work of poverty alleviation, that's one of the marginal issues in our community. One of the places we need to go is the middle class, upper middle class churches, asking ourselves constantly, where are the margins in our communities? And then there is the question of refugees. A year ago at our November meeting in November 2015 at the Hudson Church, this Presbytery passed a resolution on refugees. This was a commissioner's resolution that came to our meeting at the height of the Syrian boat refugee crisis that was going on, and that situation and crisis remains uh, constant, as we all know. Commissioner resolution talks about how we want to be as a people and as a church who are welcoming to the stranger. This commissioner's resolution was written by two pastors in the Presbytery, Jennifer Wegter McNelly and Gusty Newquist. And Jennifer uh, said this about why she brought this commissioner's resolution. She said, as followers of Jesus Christ, our first response must always be to recognize other people as children of God and welcome them, not as strangers, but as sisters and brothers. And Gusty said, when asked about why she brought this resolution, she said, now is the time to speak truth to power using our voices as people of faith to speak as best as we can for the people who are silenced. This is why we are doing transitional work. It is not about ourselves. It is about our ministry and the world around us and the gospel of Jesus Christ that we are called to live into. How can we be stronger and more capable communities of faith, a stronger, more capable presbytery, so that we can be out in the world healing the hurts around us as disciples of Jesus Christ. In the future, we will need to be up on balconies and not on the dance floor. When you are up in the balcony, you can see everything that is going on. And as leaders, we will need to watch, stay above the action. We will need to observe so we can learn and then we can act, not react, but watch and discern first. We need to notice patterns when we are up on the dance floor about the ministries that we are caretakers and midwives to, asking ourselves who is together, who is new, who has been there a long time, who is alone, who is happy, who is angry, who is not there, 
who is taking up a lot of space, who is standing in the corner. These are just a few prompts, but the sorts of things that we will need to notice so that we can do ministry with as full of a worldview as possible. And most importantly, in the future and in the present, we need to stay rooted in the spirit, not distraction. And there is a ton of distraction around us, as we know um, from our own lives. We know what these distractions are. The Holy Spirit is what God sends to be with us as an advocate. And I love the image of the Holy Spirit as a dove. A bird is also up in the air and able to see that balcony view. Maybe the Holy Spirit is what intervenes and helps us as leaders to stay up on those balconies and notice the ministry that we are called to lead in new ways. The Spirit is fire, fire that's lighting the way, but also fire that ends some things and renews other things. There is always new growth, as we know, in the forest after a fire. And the Spirit is also about baptism, and that is the rootedness of who we are and our original calling and blessing into the church in which we live. I'd like to close today with this slide. You are all probably a little bit tired of seeing it by now, but I've been putting it at the end of nearly every single one of my reports. This photo has been for me a source of inspiration in the work with this presbytery. These are hands reaching up. They are brown. The tips of them are green. I took this photograph about a month before I started here in my work with this presbytery. I took it at the North Carolina Arboretum which is near my parents' home in North Carolina, and uh, we had, were visiting them the Christmas before um, I began my ministry here in this presbytery. This is the artist's commentary on her piece. Are the green tips on those brown branches all that is left, or are they the beginning of a new greening? The answer lies in the hands of those that tend the garden. And for me, that's been our formative question as we have continued to engage this work. Transitional work does not end at a designated time, two or three years. That is our work in the present and in the future and ongoing as the church. The question for us as people of faith is, are we tending the garden? Are we providing the opportunity not just for the tips to be green, but for the entire plant the entire organism, to be green and full of life. I'd like to close tonight with a prayer that comes from this month's edition of Sojourners magazine. This is a Advent prayer, so it is a prayer to use as we prepare in a little under two weeks to begin that holy season of waiting for the good news of God contained in the Christ child to emerge. Let us pray. Flames draw our eyes to heaven's dotted white with celestial thought. To look back in time through the stars, hundreds of light years away. To glimpse God standing on the shore of God's self with outrageous visions and promises of hope that strains our belief. What can we do with such promise, with tradition that grounds us in hope, in stars, in candles, in souls set alight? Amen.